Welcome to Opinion Havers, a movie podcast for emo boys. I'm Cody. And I'm Tyler. Tyler, what did we watch? We watched The Bateman. The the Batman. <laughs> Why didn't they cast Jason Bateman? I don't understand. It would have been perfect. It would it would have been too perfect. That's the reason, I would say. I would totally watch a Jason Bateman Batman movie. Oh, damn. Mm. I mm. like I enjoyed this movie, but now that now that you said Bateman, I'm feeling like we really missed an opportunity. I'm a little disappointed. Yeah. Well, right, we, let's reboot it. Let's scrap it. Let's redo it. Okay. I I'll get a hold of uh uh Alfred. I don't know. Who do we call? Who who do you call for a Batman movie? Uh, hmm. I don't know. No, no, scratch that. Because we got to figure out one thing before we make the Bateman Batman movie. And everybody, uh-huh. you know, you got like Batfleck, you know, is the only good yep. one, really. But we got to think of a name. You know, like a combination. Or Pattinson? Or Robert Pattinson Batman. Patman. Pattinson? Patman. Yeah, but we don't need Robert Pattinson. He's out. He's old news. He's the old movie. We're talking about the new movie. Oh, for Bateman? Bateman. I mean, it has to be Bateman, right? Bateman. 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 But his name, that's just his name. It almost sounds like a Canadian saying Batman, like Bateman, eh? Like that. Hmm. Hmm. Which that could be Not perfect. I mean, he's he's from New York, which is basically Canada, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Tyler, what, what? We watched this movie. We did. Do you want to do you want to tell the good people and the bad people? You know who you are. Uh, go and give us a synopsis of what oh, the Batman's all about. It's it's the Batman. It's, there's Batman, there's a young Bruce Wayne, his parents, they died, there's villains, he's a bat, he's a man, he's a Batman, uh, he's driving around in a car that makes a loud noise, uh, he's beating up people, he is, uh, he's the hero the city needs, not the hero they deserve, or the other way around, I don't know, you know, it's, uh, it's every single other Batman movie, uh, I mean, there's really yeah. no nice way to say it, Cody. Look at me. Cody, look me deep into my eyes. This is ev- the same as every 90s Batman movie. Wow. You know, I didn't... I've seen some of them. like, But I don't recall the Val Kilmer Batman. I remember seeing parts of the Tim Burton Batman. The one I remember the most out of the air was Batman vs. Robin. Because I was old enough mm-hmm. to like see that one. <laughs> that Batman vs. Robin? You know, of course, that, I mean, that's Batman. the one... Whatever, but man, and yeah. <laughs> they were buttonheads quite a lot for the affection of uh, Poison Ivy. So, yeah. but Cody, I, uh, Cody, that's the one I remember the most. Like I know I've seen that one through multiple times. He puts the tape on his lips. Yeah, so it doesn't count when she kisses his lips. Yeah, my favorite part of that movie is when Batman and Robin are having a bidding war for who gets Poison Ivy. <laughs> I forget why they're auctioning. Uh, I don't know. He's saying million dollars, fight, whatever. And Batman literally says, you don't have the money. And Robin's like, I'll borrow it from you. <laughs> like, wait, <laughs> hold on, you're in competition with him. Just going to borrow his, that doesn't, even when I was a kid, I was, I was like a seven-year-old watching. I was like, that doesn't make no sense. Robin That's because Robin's a right kid. Now. He's like a little boy who's 30 <laughs> or whatever. I don't know. He puts tape on his lips. They're cowards. This is what I'm saying. They're never going to have a Batman Robin movie again because of that movie. But also, like, they're just cowards. They're not going to put in, even when Chris Nolan did it, he was like, that's eh, Joseph Gordon Levin. You're like, that's fine, but he's like a grown man. Like, I need, give me the 12 year old Robin, like the one that I was promised. That's what I want. And we never address it. We never address why it's, why it's them too and why everyone's okay with it. And it just is, you know? Mm-hmm. Why isn't anyone doing it? Cowards. Yeah. Jason, we already have it. It's perfect. 
Jason Bateman, Michael Cera. <laughs> it's right there. They've but already Michael worked Sarah's together. Already somebody else, isn't he? Scott Pilgrim. Yeah. But I'm talking like a real movie, you know? Excuse me? Yeah, you heard me, Cody. What about it? All right, are, you heard me. Are you thinking he was in the movie? You heard me. You don't know any of the superhero movies, right? No, I don't know. You're probably. Are you thinking he's of Kick Ass? Is that what you're thinking of? He's in The Simpsons. You know what more is there? Oh, everyone's in. The, I'm in The Simpsons, bro. <gasps> what? Says when? Well, I have a question for you. Okay. How'd it go for you? What's your quick take? What's your hot take on the Batman? I think it was an hour too long, and it is just a remake of a 90s movie. Um, it tries to lean on its, uh, like, violence and, like, grittiness, but it's not nearly violent or gritty enough to lean on those. Um, Robert Pattinson is just Robert Pattinson as Edward as the Batman. Um, it's literally Edward from Twilight, from the later Twilight movies, when he was more broody and pale and compared to Batfleck and Christian Bale uh, he's bad as Batman and I'm sad that I have to say that wow it was a bad experience for you I thought it was alright I mean I thought this would have been a great movie if the Christopher Nolan trilogy had never existed <laughs> this would be the best Batman movie probably wow that's how I this is going to be a discussion today. I thought this was going to be like an open shut case because I liked it a lot. I really enjoyed this movie. I don't think it was perfect, but let me tell you, I think I might have liked it more than certain Chris Nolan films. <gasps> <laughs> I liked it a lot. You. I know, I know. And I, Tava, I really thought we'd be on the same page, and I'm excited. I'm nervous. I'm nervous that we aren't. But I'm ready to get into it if you are. I'm I'm prepared. I'm ready. You know, I'm here. <clears throat> Cody, hop in my Fast and Furious car. Not the Batmobile, because that would be too good if we had a Batmobile. We're just going to have <laughs> Dominic Toretto's car from Fast and Furious 7. Hop in here with me. And let's go to Spoiler Town. Spoiler Town, USA. Because there's no Batmobile. Look, I can tell. I can tell you're a little geared up. I'm you up. fired up today? I think you should go first. Oh, man. Right. I know. Oh. You, you're fresh. You I saw just, this sooner than I did. You just I, saw this. I just saw it. I just saw it. I'm it's pulling been like a whole uh, three days since I've seen this. Oh. This is basically ancient history. I got to clear my you throat know? here. <clears throat> you know, I got to be ready. All right. Are you ready for this? I don't think you're prepared. I'm, I'm not prepared, ready. I'm like but I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm not prepared, but I'm ready. All right. All right. Shush. I've started the timer. All right, Cody. Here we go. Like I said, I think this movie. Everybody's out here. They're saying, "Oh my gosh, the Batman! It's the best. It's number ninety-two on the top-rated IMDb movies. It's already nominated for three awards or whatever. Nobody cares, Cody, because it's not that great. I don't like it." Matt Reeves, here's what he does. He's like, oh, you remember The Dark Knight? That was pretty good. What if I made that just a little bit, like, worse? And, like, what if I took, like, uh, the old Bat the old 90s Batman movies and I'm like, oh, I'm going to apply this new gritty filter. Here's It's everything wrong with DC right now. Where they're like, mm, what if it's like we took all the superhero stuff and we made it gross and we put everybody in gimp suits and we made everybody walk real slow and everybody has a tortured, tragic past. And they're like, oh. My father was a bad man. It's like, look, one of, the, one of the the truths it feels like is like Bruce Wayne's dad is a good guy. Okay? And it's like, oh, where's the struggle in that? The struggle comes in that his dad is like it's his dad is like Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk or Bill Gates, who they care about stuff, they do good stuff, they do a lot of philanthropic work, but they're still billionaires while people starve to death in the streets. 
All right. So that's where you find that, like, you don't understand Bruce, but here's what they did. They're like, you know what we should do? We should make his dad a murderer. But then guess what? Sweet. He's not a murderer. You know, he was a good guy the whole time, except for he still went to a crime boss and made him say, he told him to take care of it, which was stupid and something that no other movie would dare to say that his dad would do. All right. And then they're like, oh, and we'll do the thing where the Riddler, just like in every other movie, knows who Bruce Wayne is. Except for a psych, he doesn't know who Bruce Wayne or who Batman is, right? He doesn't know Batman's Bruce Wayne. But he's going to make you think it for most of the movie. But then it's not him. And then it's like, we're going to have a guy who's just real creepy and zoned out. Who literally seems like they woke him up and then they're like, you're the Riddler, slapped him on the butt and threw him in the scene and didn't give him any direction. And then he screamed and then they're like, perfect, nailed it, very angsty, moving on. And it's like, look, this is the thing that they people don't like about the DC movies. Maybe dial back the angst. All right, don't put out the movie, don't dial it up, don't put more gimp suits, don't make the walking slower. You could have cut out an hour of this movie if he had walked at normal speed, all right? Like, I understand you're trying to be like, but he's big and tough, but Batfleck is the previous Batman, a man that gained like 150 pounds of muscle and put a muscle shirt on for this role. And then you put... And everybody's like, oh, but Robert Pattinson's bulking up. I saw pictures of him. He was shredded. And then they took his shirt off. And I was like, that's freaking Robert Pattinson from Twilight. He's not buff at all. He's a tiny little stick of a man. That's a different person. That's, he, I, I cannot imagine that that's the same person that is in the bat suit. That is there, that guy spray painting on this gothic cathedral that he lives in. I hated the Bat Cave. It was garbage and awful. Why does he have switches and dials everywhere? He's a super rich, super smart, like, like genius. Why, why is everything weird? And like, why does it seem like he's in an alien world with like a membrane screen for everything? Why does he like have to hit a giant? physical print button when everything else is like no no it's the back cave he's a billionaire it's all high tech everything else agrees on that and this thing's like but what if it's not andy circus is alfred let's talk about this ray of sunshine <laughs> andy circus needs to be alfred forget about michael kane <laughs> forget about michael kane andy circus is the new alfred all right let's agree on that fact all right he's the best he's my favorite new alfred of all time all right oh so good we love him. Can we agree on that fact? We love Andy Serkis? All right, good. I see the nods. Yes. Now let's get back to the uh, Wayne Tower. Why is it a gothic cathedral? Why is everything a thousand years old when he's like, oh, we moved it there. I remember us moving there when it was finished. Okay, then why is it? Why is everything so old and creepy and dusty? It's like that, that you're but you're living, everything's spiky, everything's dimly lit, you have like rotary phones everywhere, what is happening, man? Like, what? why is everything old? Why is the Batmobile just a Fast and Furious car? Why can't it be a Batmobile? Why is it super loud? When the Batmobiles in the past have all been like, oh, they need to be able to run quiet, or he needs to be able to do the power, because he's got to be stealth. Time to cut you off right here. And look... I think, you know what? I've just got to start my timer because I have things to say, okay? I think you didn't understand this movie for several reasons. Number one, it's gothic because it's Gotham. That's the rule. It's Gotham, it's gothic, it's emo. That's the whole point of it. That's why they're allowed to do it. No one was mad and Tim Burton do it, did it. And if you've ever been to Six Lives Magic Mountain, you would know how cool the Batman part of the park is. You're like, ooh. Good job, Tim. All right? That's the one good thing Tim's ever done in his life. It's all we have of him, okay? Number two. I did like Andy Serkis. I don't know. He can't. Michael Caine, though, with the little with his little speech impediment accent. Love it. So good. It's hard. Andy Serkis did a great job. I'm going to have to mull on that more because he didn't impress me so much that it was, like, top of mind. But he did do a good You're right. He did a good job. I'm going to have to... I got something to think about that one, all right? And I appreciate that. I will say, I agree, the Batmobile stuff, not, didn't love it. Like, the car chase scene was like, who's, which car are we following now? Which one are we driving? Where's the camera? Why is the camera outside? Whatever. All right. Can we 
Chase is over? Cool. Got it. Here's the problem with this movie. My biggest problem. My only problem, really. I have the same glasses as the Riddler, and that makes me sad. It makes me a sad boy that I am wearing almost the exact same glasses that the Riddler had in this movie. And let me tell you, he's a creepy boy. They were like, you know what? You know, what if we made him creepy? That's cool. What if we made him horrifyingly creepy? And they were like, they just greenlit it. They said, okay. And I'm like, no, it's not okay. But I liked it. I thought the tone worked really good for the movie. And here's what I liked about this movie. You talked about it wanting to rely on the action, whatever. The action was fine. I, I liked that it was a mystery. And I know, like, I hated all the Bond movies that were like hard mysteries, but I loved this movie as a mystery. I was like, ah, great. Who's the Riddler? What's the next clue? How are we going to follow him? And I really appreciated the bad puns and uh, the Riddleriness of it. I really liked it. I thought it was great. I thought it was fresh in that way because it was a more a mystery than just like an action kind of movie, you know? But it really felt like a slow burn mystery and I liked it and I was invested in it, which is not the easiest thing to do with me, okay? I liked that the costumes were a little more, they tried to just dial, be like, all right, what's like a realistic Catwoman costume? Oh, her beanie can looks like a kitty cat and she has long nails. You're like, cool, it's all I needed, all right? Uh, I thought Catwoman was great. Good job, Zoe K, nailed it, high five. Um, yeah, Batman, look, you can say he's a super genius, sure, he's a smart guy, but he's a detective smart, okay, that's what I liked about it, I feel like they really rooted back, because even like the Chris Nola ones, it's like, uh, Morgan Freeman, figure all this stuff out, <laughs> and like, that was kind of it, you know, like, you know, not that Christian Bale isn't a great Batman, but you know, I feel like Robert Pattinson was like, hey, there's ciphers, I'm killed, let's crack it, and you know, I'm gonna figure out what he's doing. Um, yeah, it wasn't a perfect movie, but I loved it. Like, I thought it was great. There were some bits with these. The action was fine. There were parts at the end, like, right, the city's flooded, and, like, the transformer sparking, and Batman goes in the water. I was like, oh, no, he's killing himself. Oh, no, he's, oh, it's just dark. Oh, all right, I don't know. There were some beats like that where I was like, I don't know, is this serving? This? I, was just, I was just confused more than anything. Um, I thought it was a good job. It didn't overplay the themes, but it did have them in there, you know, talking about, like, the fear as a tool and whatever, and, all that stuff. Penguin Waddle. You can be mad at the whole movie, but you gotta love the Penguin Waddle. They made the Penguin Waddle, and that's and that's a beautiful thing. I loved it. Um, they did a go. They put a GoPro on Batman's face. <clears throat> that was fine for the when he's flying through the city. But I liked that he fell. <laughs> like, like they're like, yeah, but if you really tried to do this in the city, you would hit the L train, wouldn't you? And that's what he did, and it was great. It was perfect. Okay. Um. I loved, I really liked the Riddler. Like, the Gimp is creepy, whatever. The glasses were creepy, obviously. We don't even need to state that, but it's true, you know? Um, I, I liked that they just went hard on it. I thought that it worked. My favorite part of it was, like, at the end, the Riddler was like, we did a great job. High five, buddy. And he's like, what? No, I'm not doing this. And he's like, we're partners, <laughs> you know? It's like, you helped me do all this stuff. Like, I love that, like, turn for, like, the end of the movie. I was like, oh, that is such a cool way to, like, play... Paul Dano against uh, Robert Pattinson. So I really liked it. And I liked they tease where it's like, oh no, he's got Bruce Wayne's identity. And I was like, oh no, he doesn't. But also maybe he does. Like maybe he is that kind of guy. He's going to hold that in his back pocket. You don't know. You don't know what he knows. You don't know Paul Dano. You don't know. I love they had him sing because canonically he is Brian Wilson because he played Brian Wilson in a movie. So it's like, this is great and perfect. That sounds greatest pop album of all time. We can agree on that, can't we? Um, tell you what, I was unsettled. The active shooter scenario, I wasn't ready for it. All right, that's what I was not prepared for. Oh, gotta, oh, gotta cut Tyler. You off let's you real. talk about domestic terrorism. Like there have been so many movie theaters shot up because of like who take their inspiration of Batman, I should say, right? Because there was the Joker guy who did that, and it's happened a couple times yeah. with different people. So when they had, where it's like. Hey, we're uh, we're proud boys, and we're gonna shoot. I was like, oh no, I'm not ready. <laughs> like, I was like looking her on the sides of the theater. I was like, are they coming in now? Like, I don't, <laughs> I'm not ready to die. You know, that's where I was at. That's what it's like to live in America, and Paul Dano's America. All right, mm -hmm. always wondering when the when the hacker boys, when the the extremists with gimp suits are gonna come and shoot you. You know? Yeah. Um, you didn't like Paul Dano. Paul Dano screaming, but his scream was just the beginning of a word. I loved it. When he was like, ah, I thought we were friends. I was like, this is great. I, Look.
I didn't like it. I like so here's I think the problem. <laughs> I would have liked it if it was a different character. But here's the thing. I like the Riddler, and I like the Riddler for one reason. Why? The Riddler is not like out there to like you know, like each of the bo- or like not the bosses, each of the uh the villains I feel like for Batman have like a thing. You know, like Joker's out there to cause like chaos, the penguin is out there to like He's a mob boss, so he's making money, doing that kind of stuff. The Riddler's thing is he is super smart. Batman's the only person he's ever met who's as smart as him. And he's like, this is a game. And the only way to get you to play is to threaten people. And that's like his whole thing. It's like, yeah, he's like, we're going to do this. And I'm going to lay out these riddles and see if you can figure it out. And then the ones and then, you know. He's like, I want you to figure it out because it's a game. I want to keep playing. So I like the, that the Riddler is like, his whole thing is that he's like crazy, but he's super smart. And it's like, it's mm-hmm. just a game to him. He doesn't ever really take it as seriously as it is. Whereas I feel like this guy was more like Scarecrow and the Joker mixed. Where it's like, I'm creepy. And I'm crazy. And it's like, neat. none but- of those things are like... The riddles and like but, the way he did it, I'm like, this is like the Joker. <laughs> this is like how the Joker's riddles were. Can work. I ask you this? You understand the history and the lore and the everything of Batman, right? A little bit. Can you can you take off your Batman lore glasses and put on your "I'm here to enjoy a good movie slash story" glasses? Did it work? And just like, oh, good story, interesting villain, enjoyed the. But I would say, like, if you if it's like if you have to take off the lens of what what you like or don't like about the characters, then what's the point of making it a Riddler, making it the Riddler versus just somebody different? Or what's the point of making it a Batman movie? If it's like, well, forget everything you know about Batman. It's like, well, then what's the point? The problem is they've been making Batman movies consistently. Like the biggest gap in Batman movies was what six or seven years between 1989 to today. So you have to do something different, don't you? How many Batmans have there been? You got Keaton, Kilmer, Clooney, Bale, Affleck, Pattinson. This is your sixth Batman. Several of those Batmans have had several movies. You know what I'm saying? So you've got to do something different. And it was like just like darker, gritty, or whatever. But because they went a different direction where it's like, no, it's more like the mystery thing and not as much of an action thing, I thought that was a good way to shake it up. I mean, once again, I don't know. I only know so much about the Riddler. I watched the Batman cartoon. I love the Nolan Batman movies. And that's mostly well, what I know about Batman. Here's you know? what you, I feel like the best way to sum up like why the Riddler being the main villain of this movie is disappointing is that so when Nolan movies were coming out, everybody wanted him to do the Riddler. And they wanted him to, mm-hmm. ca- like the person that was like, everybody universally wanted him to cast as the Riddler was Neil Patrick Harris. Oh, yeah. Because it's great. like the Riddler by wanted, he would be perfect for. So it's like that's, I feel like, what I wanted from the Riddler is like the suit wearing with all with the question mark. And like, he's like, you know, it's very like, it's like Saw, but Batman, you know, like, let's play a game kind mm-hmm. of attitude. Whereas this was like, hey, buddy, hey, pal, hey, friend, we're going to murder some people together. But then it's like, but you didn't like, the only time he ever actually kind of helped you was to bring Falcone out. (laughs) Other than that, he was just chasing you. Mm. So how are you like, oh, but we were partners in all of this. You helped me at every step. It's like, except for none of the steps. But he uncovered the whole thing, you know? He helped him bring the whole thing out. The whole conspiracy. And okay, okay. You talked about the Wayne family thing. I really liked the Wayne family thing. I liked, because I feel like in the Nolan ones, it was just like, he was like the perfect dude. He made the L train for everyone. Isn't that nice? And this one, it was like, I liked that they were like, hey, yeah, the family had tons of skeletons in the closet. Like, the mom was kind of crazy, and they didn't want anybody to know that. And um, So I, I just appreciated that it was like, nope, they're, they have their problems. And they just wanted their appearances to look great. Which, um, okay, here's the thing about that, I, though, right? Is they're like, oh, 
they're they got skeletons they're bad but then it's like oh here comes alfred to be like no actually your dad didn't care about any of that stuff he was a great person you know and he was gonna expose all this and it's like don't make him out like oh your dad wasn't this perfect guy he did some stuff and then be like psych he was this perfect guy who was gonna save the city and it's only because he died that the city is this awful place it's like don't if you're gonna make it where like Bruce Wayne is part of the reason that or not Bruce Wayne, if what's his dad's name? Thomas? Martha? Martha yeah. Thomas? Thomas, I right. think. If you're gonna make it so Daddy Wayne is part of the reason that the city is the way it is and benefited from it being a cesspool, don't then have Alfred swoop it like wake up from his coma that they're like, he probably won't survive. Which that was another BS thing where they're like, Alfred's dead. Psych, he's fine. And I'm like, What's the point? What was the point of that then? Well, ninety percent of the movie just existed to make the movie longer. That's what drove me nuts. Yeah. And I'm like, that the that Alfred is kind of a being weird bombed beat. thing. I wanted Alfred to die. I love Andy Circus, but it's like without him dying, then there's no point. And then it's like, but then who would say that his dad wasn't a bad a bad well, guy? And it's like to have nobody. That's what say I wonder. It. Is like. Well, that's the other thing is like, of course, Andy Serkis is going to say he's great. And the other guy, everyone else is going to say he's bad, like on paper. So does he exist somewhere in the middle of those two things? You know, like just because Alfred said it doesn't mean it's like 100% gospel, you know? And I feel like that's what I kind of liked is it was like, so what, where does Pat Man stand with, uh, with his family's legacy, you know? Yeah. Um, I, just, I will say another weakness of the film I do feel like is like he was a pretty poor Bruce Wayne, you know, like they just they didn't do the Bruce Wayne thing at all. It was literally just like, hey, you kind of got to show up to his funeral <laughs> like yeah. that was it, you know, like whereas at least in the I thought it was interesting in like if you like the Nolan Batman movies, it's like he's trying to be the playboy for like appearances, but then that puts him at odds with like his real friends, you know, where it's like, hey, this is, is this really what you're doing with your time, you know, whereas this one I just kind of like. Bruce Wayne's just a re- recluse, and so we don't have to deal with, uh, you know, him being a character, really. Um, yeah, which was we, which, I, I, which is kind of weird, where it's like, you get, Pattinson's a great actor. Yeah. We've seen him, he's been in some great movies, great performances, and then they did just kind of throw him in. They were like, hey, just be emo boy, be kind of muted. And like, we didn't get to see much of a performance from him. It was, when he's in the suit, it's very much, this is just Batman. But then when he's Bruce Wayne, it's just like, it's kind of a mopey, tired boy, which I get it. Like, he's a creature of the night and obviously wouldn't be sleeping well. I, I did like that he was, like, a beaten down kind of dude, but also it didn't feel like Pattinson got to give much range of a performance of what Bruce Wayne was, you know? I think he gave the exact same performance, and I don't think it's on him. I think it's on the writers and the, like, director, which is the same person for the most part, as he did in Twilight, where they're like, be emo goth dude, that doesn't say stuff and when he does sound like you're you're taking a huge dump while you say it <laughs> where it's like <clears throat> the same this any and then <clears throat> you know like take mm. some laxatives get it all out come back be the gem <laughs> that we know you can be robert pattinson get this reeve dude out of here here's the other thing <laughs> it's like Batfleck was going to direct and be and star in this movie and then left because he's like, eh, I don't think this is going to be a good movie. And then the mm-hmm. other dude came in and was like, I'm going to rewrite it. And I'm like, did you rewrite it? Because I'm like, if I was going to be like my name attached to it, I would be like, I don't think this is going to play well with Batman fans. But I think it I think the re- it plays well for the same reason that Joker played well. Like you said, it's different mm. and it's different from what we've gotten consistently and people like that. Yeah. I'm saying like, I think it shouldn't, I feel like people are praising it from what I've seen and now I haven't watched it mm-hmm. for being different when it's like, just cause it's different doesn't mean that it's magically great. I still think like Robert Pattinson was, is capable of a way better performance as Batman. Yeah. I mean, he's bad. I thought his Batman performance was fine. Um, I just think uh, you made a good point. Right? Like the writing didn't give him anything to work with. I'm like, okay, who is Bruce Wayne? You know, because we're really just 
even that, like, I never felt like he was, I felt, I, I never felt like he was the master detective. I felt like Alfred was the master detective. And then it's like him, like, I don't understand all these clues. And Alfred being like, oh, you know, I, I, you know, in my spare time, I deciphered this impossible to decipher code. And then him like, but what if it is a code? And then, okay. So Alfred did 90% of the work. And then you're like, no, Batman, what no. If? He was great at the clues. Because remember, there's the one cipher, and he's like, I tried to do this cipher, and there's so many letters. No, he's like, what if you just use the letters that were given in the thing as the cipher? And it's like, oh, here's different. You know, and he was good. Yeah. I just, it didn't. <clears throat> when it's like, what is it? What, what does a person do when they're dead? Oh, they lie still. And it's like, okay, you solved a third grade riddle, dude. Like, it's good. Batman is a thumb master drive? detective. He's the greatest detective thumb to ever drive. live. What about thumb drive, though? It was so good. He deciphered puns. I'm like, I want you to be the detective. I want you to be, like, detecting and doing, like, you know, figuring it out. And then at the end, it's like, you didn't. Like, to, I don't know. Okay, how about this? Okay, if Alfred is so smart, then how come he opened a suspicious package? That it was, like, all this crazy dumb. stuff has happened. And why don't, you, why don't you just open up a package in your living room? When you know that, like, the Riddler is a madman and doing crazy, cutting off thumbs and killing people with carpet tools. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I, I didn't mean, make any. Okay. And yeah. so what I'm right. saying is, yeah, we love Alfred, but he's a dumb boy. Like, he thinks we're playing. He thinks he's playing Wordle. He thinks he's doing the, the New York Times crossword. You know what I'm saying? The Gotham Times crossword. He's like, I'll work on these puzzles with you while I have some tea. And it's like, no, sir. There is a terrorist happening, and he's obviously going to target rich and powerful people like Bruce Wayne. Don't open that package, man. Use the bat technology to open the package. It made no sense. Okay, I got one more. I got one more. I have a scenario for you. Okay. A crazy person has given you a thumb drive with a thumb attached to it, severed human thumb attached to it. What computer are you putting that in? Not your personal like police computer. <laughs> That's another there's thing. There's only like... one there's only one kind of computer you can put it in. An air gapped computer. A computer yeah. that has never been attached to the internet that can just open the file. It's not gonna break everything you own. Yeah. Which this person plugged sitting... it into like a police computer and was like, let me just do this and let's just see what it does. Which, I mean, you know, you would think you're sitting next to a super smart, uh, you know, the world's greatest detective, super genius, uh, you know, super cool dude with all access to all kinds of technology. You would think maybe he would say, hey, man, maybe uh, I've maybe I've got a gadget in my thigh strap or my ankle suitcase he had a huge thing attached to his calf and it bothered me every time he was like doing his slow walk also they gave him the spur sound effect and i hated it i hated it oh <laughs> it's like ka-chink yeah. ka-chink and i'm like nothing should be ka-ching. i'm like dude what what you're is ka chinking on you you're a you ninja are a, <laughs> you are a stealth ninja what is tinkling <laughs> tape it down what are you doing man why are you doing this? Like, you're a bad Batman. No wonder the city's in such bad shape. Bring back Batfleck. I, this man could, Batfleck could crawl up a wall real fast like a skittery little rat. Silence. This dude can't walk without He's, everybody in a three block radius being like, oh, Batman's over there. <laughs> okay, I will say, that, here's what I will say. <laughs> you, you know, you talked about Pattinson not being buff at all for this movie and here's my whole problem with this my whole problem with it is like why does he have to be buff like you can be really good at martial arts you can be a good athlete and you don't have like you don't have to be like a ripped dude so i was like when they cast him and he and i everyone heard the stories about like oh he's having trouble putting on muscle and stuff it's just like then just train him in martial arts and let him do his thing like let him just do his fight scenes he'll do his own stunts still why does he have to be like and when it didn't work, why'd you double down and still do like the shirtless bats? You know, you're like, why did we even do that? Like, we don't, you realize you don't have to do it. Like, yeah. you can, Adam West was Batman. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. 
Have you seen the Michael Keaton Batman when he does like the kick thing behind his like head? You know, where it's like obviously just like a fake prosthetic leg. You know, it's like it doesn't have to be like you don't have to be Chris Hemsworth or Chris Evans or Chris Pratt. You don't have to be any of the Chris's. You're Robert Pattinson. You're being a grittier Batman. You're not eye candy anyway. You're like a pale. You had eye like stained eyeliner on the whole movie. You never looked good. Yeah. You are. People have called you the most handsome man alive. Like a computer program has been like, that's the one, which I don't agree with. I think he's a handsome man. But my whole thing is they didn't play up the handsomeness. They, and then they still went for them. Like, yeah, he doesn't have to be that. You're doing something different. Why are you hopping on the train and being like, look at, look at him. He's so, I don't know, man. I don't know what we're doing here, but he's here. You know, that was, it didn't make sense to me. I'm just putting a picture in our uh, in our little chat here all right and then i'm going to follow it up with another picture okay which okay it's in the in our general chat got it oh what a handsome young lad and then this is what they presented (laughs) he looks so bad so like it's so he's like well laid. he has a nice part in his hair and you're like oh that's a handsome man and then it's like what if we gave what if we lit him so that his whole eyes are just a big shadow and he's pale and his hair is bad Uh, well i mean it's like Robert Pattinson is a good-looking guy when he has his hair like he normally likes to have it when he's not actively in a role, right? Right. And he's been able to, like, go outside for more than two minutes. (laughs) And they're like, all right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take you back to Twilight Pale, give you long, stringy, greasy hair, and make your eyes, like, always a little bit stained with the grease paint from Batman. And it's like, Uh uh-huh. Like, but like, <laughs> you cast. He might like as well have just shown up Bruce to the. Wayne. Like he could have. Might as well have just like showed up to the funeral with the cowl on and been like, "It's me, Bruce. I'm just here." Like always had those stains on, so obvious. Yeah, but it's also like you're right. Like they you did. Said- they cast a great person to be Bruce Wayne, and then they just went hard, and they were like, "No, but we're gonna make him gross." You're like, why'd you? What? Why does he gotta be Why'd gross? You, cast him, you know, that's the well, question. okay, it's the per the per you made the perfect point because it's the same thing we've been talking about with uh, the penguin. Like you picked Colin Farrell, then you made him look like Richard Kind, and then you said we did it. And you're like, right, but why'd you have to make him? I thought the penguin was fine in the movie. Like I thought Colin Farrell gave a good performance. Bailey had no idea it was him. She didn't believe me when the credits rolled. She was like, Colin Farrell. I was like, yeah, he was the penguin. She's like. No, he wasn't your liar. She had to look it up. She didn't believe me. Anyway, it's just weird that it's like, hey, you know this person that looks like the way they need to look? Well, let's just do it different, you know? Let's change it. Didn't make any sense. That's okay, so that's another thing. Let's we'll we'll just, we'll pivot right here from uh from Pattinson. And let me bear down here on the penguin. At no point did I think they they nailed it. I think the character was fine. You know what I think would have been who would have really knocked that character out of the park? Who? Uh, hold on, let me look it up. Oh, oh, Richard Kind. I think he would have really Richard done Kind would have been really great. I think he would make a it great is, penguin. It's crazy that he look. They look exactly the same. Like Richard Kind just looks like a slightly nicer version of that dude. Like they could have done his makeup right, put him in the costume, and sent him out there, and it would have been really cool. Which okay, you're trying to be different. Why are you like, oh, we're doing everything? We do everything here a little bit differently, <laughs> right? Yeah. Then why do you make the penguin like the most generic? Like I ain't no rat mob crony ever. You know, and all that. And then it's like, but you could have, with this aesthetic that you obviously decided that you needed, no matter who was the penguin, could have cast Richard Kind and had him been like the, like, make him the goofy cartoony guy like he is in a, in a cartoon version. Like, that would have been, like, kind of crazy and been a little bit of, like, a breath of fresh air and would have been like, oh, well, okay, he's not a threat. But also, at the same time, you know he's the penguin, so you know he kind of well, fills the power vacuum. So It would like it would have been perfect for him to, like, be Richard Kind glad-handing people at the club, and then as soon as the doors are shut, he's, like, a menacing dude. You know, yeah. like, that would have been Which, awesome to see. And, and, yeah. I don't know how much stuff you've seen Richard Kind in. 
he Funny. can nail that switch. Like right. he can go from like, oh, hey, how you doing? To I'm going to like that <laughs> with yeah. no warning. All right. And you'd be like, oh, gosh, yeah. I was not prepared for you to threaten me in such a graphic manner. <laughs> OK. OK. I just thought of something else I want to talk about. <laughs> OK. So there's a club. There's a club within the club, which is how you know it's a cool club. And um, and there's the a club DEA. within the club within the let's club. Let's talk about let's talk about the uh, no the DA the DA. Let's talk about him. District Attorney. He's in the club and like you know the mayor guy they killed was kind of sleazy. The Penguins kind of sleazy. The Riddler's really creepy. And then they get into the club within the club and the DA's like, hey, what's going on? Oh, I'm kind of nervous. I think they're gonna kill me. <laughs> it's like wait, hold on. In this grim, dark world of Gotham, this, like, dorky, dork guy is the DA? I am so confused. This guy who's in a secret club doing illegal drugs, who is a crooked DA, (laughs) is, like, he was giving off, like, hardcore, like, 38-year-old divorced accountant vibes. I was like, hold on. (laughs) This is not the DA. Which, This this is a man in a different movie. I mean, was he supposed to come across as like he was just kind of the nerd because he was the lawyer that was part of the group? So he'd be the nerd. But I'm like, yeah, but lawyers, even good, nice, well-meaning lawyers are kind of sleazy <laughs> in general. They're right. never like And they're nerds. talking about how corrupt Gotham is. So obviously the DA would have to be, you know, he took bribes and hid things, you know, so it's like, and he's in the illegal doing drugs. I don't know. So it didn't make any sense. But I was like, what is he even? Why is he like this? Yeah. Why is he like, and you know, I mean, Cody, you could say, I mean, you can be a bad guy and still not like be a bad person towards women. It's like, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say I defy you to find a corrupt DA in this world that would just let a girl go. But after she said, no, thanks. And then go, yeah, oh, I- okay. You know, I was I tell you, no. he got that sad divorced accountant vibe going. I just didn't understand it. So I feel but like I you're coming over to my it. side. We can agree that this is a bad movie. <clears throat> no, no, not at all. I, like, I will say you might be af- affecting the grade I'm going to give this movie, but only slightly because I really, really enjoyed it in that theater. Paul Dano I loved it. I like the mystery. I like the mystery solving the action was fine like i didn't have it it wasn't bad action it wasn't like especially good but i it didn't seem like an action movie to me it really seemed like a mystery dark detective kind of noir and i was like cool i liked it i was into it catwoman was great i really liked uh like i the batmobile was fine i didn't like the driving scenes that much but i liked some of the tech i i really enjoyed uh especially like the contact lens thing where it's like oh that's their camera and with the earpiece and you, I liked it. Like, that's how we recorded things and gathered information and, like, had it all ready to be able to refer back to it. I was like, God, that makes so much sense for a dude who's, like, trying to make links and solve things. It's, like, perfect. Yeah. I mean, I liked parts of it. It's one of the, it's like a classic thing that comes up, I feel like, a lot when we're watching these movies where it's like, I feel like you wasted such a golden opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know, like, this movie. I was excited for going in. Everybody was like, oh, this is so good. I was like, all right, all you know, some of these casting choices are weird. Like the penguin. But everything else, fine. I'm excited. And then I go in and I'm like, I feel like you just made a Tim Burton Batman movie. And you're like, look, but it it's was a, it different. It wasn't a Tim Burton one because it was way more rooted in realism. You know what I'm saying? The Tim Burton would be way more cartoony and like, gross but in like a way or you know like the penguin just like bleeding and black goop out of his mouth all the time you know like it was much more rooted in realism kind of deal yeah but it was still just creepy to be creepy like there wasn't a reason for some of the creepy stuff to be creepy other than it's creepy no but I, i was like genuinely unsettled by the riddler and his cronies and everything i was like oh this is like a really interesting way to like kind of ground it in things that have happened in the, in like the modern world, you know, like, Oh, it's like this underground black web, dark web society doing all this stuff and he's streaming it and they've got, you know, like I liked that 
and the active shooter thing, which was very unsettling. It didn't, yeah, I don't know. It didn't make the most sense that they were just going to, like, shoot people. But it's fine. Here's what bugged me the most about this movie. <sighs> it didn't bug me. It made a lot of sense because it's what happens in the real world. So he blows up the seawall, floods Gotham, and the mayor is like, don't worry, we're going to rebuild. It's like, dude, if your city's going to flood that easily, you probably shouldn't rebuild. It's something we're going to have to come to terms with as a society. Climate is getting more unpredictable, and we're like, this place uh, that's a floodplain, we're going to put concrete on it and put buildings on it. So yep. when the buildings get destroyed, we're going to make a really big deal about how resilient we are and rebuild on it. It's like, no, you, that was a floodplain you built on, so you shouldn't rebuild because that's where the water's supposed to go. You know what I'm saying? Cody, you don't understand, all right? I understand, all right? You know... I'm I'm up here. We we're in will Boston. rebuild. Exactly. You know, and if the mayor of Boston said, I don't know who it is, we'll rebuild, I'd be like, cool. I don't actually live in Boston, so it wouldn't really affect me. <laughs> I live near Boston. I live in what's known as the greater Boston area, which is most of Massachusetts. Yeah. Isn't that fun? Um. It is fun. I did not realize this movie was going to be three hours going into it. Oh, so let me tell you. It didn't, it felt like a two hour 15 maybe, or two hour movie. Like I didn't feel the slog of it. I was surprised at the end. I was like, wait, is this the end? Is this right? Where are, we, where are we going with it? At the end, I was like, oh, it's been three hours. I didn't even think about it. I liked it. I enjoyed it a good little bit. And I'm going to give it a good grade. I know you got more to say. I do. But that's how I feel. Here, okay. Here's the thing, Cody. My boy. This movie, there's no consequences to this movie. This is a movie that, like, has itself set up, right, to be like, oh, you know, like, your choice, like, your actions, your decisions you made in the past have consequences. But there was no, like, for a movie that's like, we're going to remove ourselves from the the universe, right? So there's no promise. Even though they did, they did, a, like, a real half-done setup for a sequel, you know, at the end. It's like, there's no, like, promise of a sequel. It's not connected to anything else. There's no Superman in this world. It's just a Batman movie. So it's Batman, Batman villains. Oh, Batman. what? You wanted to throw Superman in this movie after what no. just happened with... Okay. No, I'm just saying, like, the whole so, point is they've disconnected, they've broken the connection to the DC universe, right? So they got free reign to do whatever they want. So they're like, oh, we're going to blow up Alfred. Alfred's fine. He's in the hospital. He may not recover. He's fine. He wakes up and, oh, but I, uh, Bruce's dad may have been a bad person. Oh, Alfred woke up. He told him, no, no, he worry. He wasn't a bad person, so it's fine. Oh, but like, uh, oh, but Batman, he's going to sacrifice himself to save these people from something that's totally not a threat because it's just above the water and the water seems to have stopped rising at this point. They could have just shut the power off. But now he's going to jump on this thing, sacrificing himself to save these people, dying as a symbol. Oh, he he's fine. He got up. OK, he's got to get shot. He's going to get shot. Oh, he's fine. Oh, this. Oh, no. Oh, OK. No, he's fine. Oh, no. But this guy. But look at. The mayor that's never been in any Batman franchise ever and you've never heard of, he died. It's like, I don't care about him. <laughs> I've only seen him as a duct-taped face. And then the dude that you saw yeah. for two seconds, that you're like, hmm, I hope he dies. He dies. So it's like, there's nothing, like, there's no... It's a movie that's like, we're gonna, get, we're gonna make yeah. you feel things, we're gonna get you. And then they're like, we got you. Oh, we didn't get you, though. And like, the they get a committed harder and made some more bold choices. I mean, it is crazy that Batman and Alfred both exploded in this movie and neither one died. You know, yeah. like, and you're like fu- whatever. It's so, like you said, like, oh, they do the thing where it's like, oh, yeah, he hit the train and he crashed and he jumps tumbling and smacks into cars and stuff. Next scene, he's fine. There's nothing. They never, like, 
They don't even give him the thing that they do. But he had to the, do adrenaline drugs to himself. After to he got shot at point blank by two shotgun shells, that's the only time he had to do the adrenaline shot. That's exactly. the thing where it's like so. The, I mean, the, in the Nolan Batman's, they showed him all bruised up, and it's like, oh yeah, like this is affecting him. Like, and even in and then in like Batfleck, he showed like he talked about he's like because he's supposed to be older Batman, so he's like, I'm. I can't heal as easily as I used to be able to. And it's like this one, it's like, oh, so you are like making a point, like you said, to be more grounded in reality while at the same time being the most cartoony with the amount of damage. He is a video game character. He's like, I just need to go stand in an alley for like seven seconds and then my health bar will recharge and then I can go back out to fight him. It's like, <laughs> Look, why? here's what I'll say. This is why this is, one of the best Batman movies ever. This is the first one to address the eye makeup. All right? That's what you understand. Because all the other ones, it's like the mask comes off and he's like, it's me, Bruce Wayne. But he, but his eyes are all black around it. So this is the first one to be like, look, he takes the mask off and he's still got the black on him. Okay. It's Here's smart. I'm it's convinced smarter he than the other most ones. Of the Nolan ones. Because they have him have like the eye makeup. They show him putting it on in the Nolan movies. So? They also have him take his mask off, and he has the black. It's just not like he doesn't do the black down to the bottom of his chin and up to his forehead. It's just around his eyes. So it's like it was supposed to evoke the tears, Cody, but I'm like, look, don't evoke things. It's like a movie that wanted to be super artsy and like the Joker, but also have mass appeal. And I think they nailed well, it, but I, I think it's because <laughs> of it, you know? Yeah, I I don't blame them for having it disconnected from everything else because it's just like the DCEU was so like ill-conceived and I think they made the decision actively to be like, hey, these are these are just all solo projects. Like they're not related to one another. And since they've decided to do that, they've put out some really good movies. Like from Harley Quinn on, like, you know, Shazam, Harley Quinn, Suicide Squad, and this were all like, leaps and bounds better than what they did with Justice League and um, and uh, the other Suicide Squad. You know, like, I just, I feel like their movies have gotten a lot better since they've made that decision. Um, so, I mean, you know, like, I don't know power if to them, you yeah. remember this, but, like, I've always thought how they, they shouldn't, it seems unrealistic to try to compete with Marvel in the cinematic universe realm. So it always seems like what they should do is like say we have a cast like this person is Superman, this person is Aquaman, this person is Batman, this person is this person that you can use. And it's like they're known as this person or if you want to do a different kind of story that like old Batman, Ben Affleck doesn't fit that, then you just get a different Batman. And you do your own standalone thing, and it's like, do you want to incorporate one of the other people? So do it more like how comics do it, where it's like, you have, you're making a Batman movie. That means you have full range to anything Batman, and if you want to, you can try to bring in other stuff. But it's really like, it's a Batman yeah. movie. And then maybe do the bigger projects, but they're not all really tied together. It's like their own storylines, you know? Yeah. I, yeah, and, and I, w I guess another thing I will say about Batman is there are so many Batman villains that we've never explored in movies. So it is kind of a bummer that like literally every villain in this movie we've done in my lifetime in a Batman movie. You know, yeah. it's like we've done the Penguin, we've done the Riddler in nine in the nineties. I would love to see them take like a more obscure villain and be like, hey, we're gonna make this the feature of. That's what I kind of like about Batman Begins is it's like, hey, Scarecrow hasn't been done in a movie yet, and have we done Ra's al Ghul at all? I don't think so. You know, so it was kind of cool. That's what they started with. Um, whereas, you know, since then it's been like, oh, we got a Joker. Joker it? You got a Joker it. And they kind of, you know, they teased the Joker at the end of this one. So I don't know. I, I do wish that it's just like, hey, why don't, if you want to do something different, we can uh there's all these batman villains you could use you know someone more obscure i think the original script i just saw was the ben affleck script was going to be deathstroke as the villain yeah which i was even just saying i was like deathstroke is a good one because he's like something someone that doesn't 
come up a lot. He's been in the shows, and people love him in the shows. But he hasn't gotten the big budget movie look yet. Um, I would say kind of what summed this up is like at the end, like there towards the end when they were doing the Joker talking to the Riddler thing. It was like, I didn't think, oh, sweet, the Joker. I thought, oh, my gosh, are they going to make another one? Which I don't think you should end a movie being like, gosh, are they going to do more of these? Like, is this going to become a thing? Whereas at the end of, like, the Nolan Batman ones, you're always like, oh, are they going to do another one? You know, like, (laughs) so it's, which, I mean. I mean, it would be. I like both those actors a lot, like, and they're both actors that are good at doing like really unsettling, strange characters. So I mean, if they want to keep the vibe going, I think those are good picks for them. But it is like, it is hard. It's hard because like Heath Ledger did such a great job with the Joker, and Jared Leto's was so out there and different. And like, I don't think people really liked it too much. And so to just go back to the Joker again is kind of like, yeah. I don't know. He's a great villain, and I understand that you want to use him because everyone knows him, and he's great. But he's been done really, really well two Batmans ago, you know? So yeah, maybe and hold off on that one. I still think every Joker is fine. Like, in far as, like, there's some great ones, there's some nant ones, but it's, like, none of them are bad because the Joker is such a... Like, the Joker is one of the characters where it's not there's just really less consistency to him because his whole nature is that he's like a crazy person. Mayhem. That, yeah. He's yeah. like, he's just there to stir stuff up. Right. You know, like one of the things um, I really liked was it was the, I think it's the killing joke, which is something people really like. I think was it that one or maybe it's a different, re- more recent big budget animated movie that they made. But it was like at the there's like a Killing final Joke fight. Was a big one. Um, between Batman yeah. and the Joker, and Batman goes to take his cowl off, and Batman or the Joker throws himself off the roof because he's like, I don't want to know. That takes the fun out of it. I want to figure it out. I don't want you to tell me who you are. Mm. Yeah. And that's like how he dies: is he kills himself so that uh, Batman won't reveal his identity to him. And I'm like, that's mm-hmm. quintessential Joker, where he's just like. I'm going to figure out who you are. Fine, I'll just tell you. No, I will kill myself before I let you tell me. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> who plays the Joker? I'm trying to find it. I can't find it. It's driving me. Barry K- Kogan. He was in Eternals. He's in Killing the Sacred Deer. He is um, in some other movie. I'm just going to I'm just gonna have to control F this. If I search for Joker on IMDb, I'm getting nothing. Barry K E O G H A N. It's in the Green Knight. Unseen Night. Arkham He's Prisoner. In Dunkirk. Oh. Chernobyl. American Animals. I have mixed feelings about yeah. this guy. Um, he's great at playing creepy dudes. He's like fantastic at it. Why do you have mixed feelings? I don't know. I just feel like he's kind of like, I feel like he is kind of like Robert Pattinson in that he always just gets cast as like a, yeah, here I am, I'm unsettling because I'm speaking in a monotone voice and I'm very calm in this uncalm situation. And that's unsettling you, but I'm also, I haven't changed anything and I haven't really said or done anything. I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of here and being Irish. Is he even Irish? Here's what you got to do. He is Irish. No, He is Irish. You got to watch Killing of a Sacred Deer, which is Colin Farrell and uh, Barry Keegan in it. Mm-hmm. And change your mind. It has ruined this man for me because now I look at him and I'm like, I don't, less screen time for you. No eye contact. I can't do it because he was so creepy in that movie. I was like, oh, yeah. So it kind of ruined him for me, ruined him for me. He's in. I really love the movie American Animals. It's a great indie movie. He's in that one. Fantastic. So, I don't know. We'll see. I really like the movie. You you talked me off my pedestal. Like you talked me off of giving this movie like the bet the score I wanted to give it. 
but I'm still I'm teetering. I'm trying I mean, to decide what it, grade I'm going to give it. Do you do you know? Do I know? Do you what know I'm what you're going to give it? I mean, I've been I've been thinking, but I'm like I don't want. I feel like I'm trying to be harsh because I'm trying to be critical because I'm just like you know. So I'm trying to play up the fact that I obviously did not like it as much as you did, but also it's like. Okay, I'll put it this way. I do not regret going to see this movie. I don't regret. I drove into Boston to see it in Dolby, which shout out to the Dolby mix. It was fantastically mixed. And like the surround sound was mm. on point. And I was like, this is great for a couple scenes. Uh, and I could understand everything, which I was like, oh man, if I wasn't here in like the super nice speakers, this would be a problem. Like if I had just gone to see it in the regular theater, I bet you I wouldn't have heard. 30% of the dialogue. And there's not much dialogue, I feel like. But mm-hmm. I liked the casting. I felt like the casting was squandered. I liked... I liked the fact that... Like, okay, so... I'll put, I'll point out something. I'll, you know, some, I thought they did really well was... The, the Nolan Batman, I felt like he had to hit somebody like a thousand times for them to stay down. And people just kept getting up. And the fight scenes were kind of like, they were real floaty. And it's, it felt more like he was smacking them than he was punching them. Whereas this one went like that. You know when the first time you saw Captain America Winter Soldier in theaters and he punched that guy and the bass like rumbled your chair and you're like, that guy's dead. <laughs> That's how I felt. And I was like, I liked that. I liked that it's like one punch from Batman and you're probably knocked out. What I didn't like, like I said, was you based it on a big buff guy like Batfleck, and then you cast a skinny little guy who would have done better at the flippy floaty fights. It's like you kind of should have probably. You can still be like that. Like I think if Bruce Lee punched me once in the head, I probably wouldn't get back up. And he was a very skinny guy, right? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But I'm like, but he was also like skinny jack. <laughs> Like yeah. He was absolutely like shredded, whereas Pattinson was not. But yeah, but that's I mean, that like, my point. You could, like, but like choreograph the fights more like to fit that. Don't be like, don't make him out like he's this huge slow tank. Be like, no, no, he's a skinny fast dude that also one or two hits and you're down. Yeah, but I liked that. I liked those scenes. I liked the. My favorite scene was the fight in the when all the lights went out and there was the guy shooting and it was lit by the gunshots. I thought that was yeah. really cool, especially the end part where it's the two guys shooting with their um, machine guns and it's like him just lit up as he's slowly walking towards them. I was like, that's cool. Yeah, It's like I what I wanted them to do was what I thought this movie was going to be, which is like if you shot it entirely from the bad guy's perspective, it'd be a horror movie basically. Right, yeah. Which I felt like they... Because that's his whole thing. He's vengeance, he's fear. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like they just pulled back. Like, if they had gone full down that Mm. road, they could have done it in PG-13. It wouldn't have had to been R. But they were like, no, if we make it too scary, it's going to be R. And it's like, no, no, you could have made it. Like, these people are... Like, you could have made the whole thing the same story, which is everybody's terrified of him. Because at the end, it's like him being like, oh, city doesn't need vengeance it needs hope i need to be like a symbol of hope not vengeance but you could have ratcheted up people being scared of him then it would have made more sense at the end when he's like reaching to help them and everybody's like no instead of them just being like you're black and i'm like i feel like this is racist like that's what it came across as not like you're scared of him but like you're racist against bats like that's what it came across (laughs) as i felt like i'm like also, I didn't like that they're like the the rat with wings, and nobody except for the penguin was like, like a bat. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, a rat with wings is a bat. Batman, you should know that. He's like a penguin, a falcon. I'm like, I thought it was gonna be Batman, and then it wasn't bats. And I was like, Are you freaking kidding me? I gave it a D. Plus. Stop. <laughs> no. It You're was giving just, this movie a D plus. It's such a fumble of such it was such it was like this close to being great. If they had done just a touch in any other direction, it's like right in the middle of a bad movie. I won't watch it again, probably. <laughs> I really liked it. I liked it a lot. 
I'm teetering between a B plus and an A minus. Like, like when I walked out of the theater, I literally thought The Dark Knight is the only Batman movie better than this. And now that I've talked to you, I'm like, maybe both the Nolan ones are better. But after that, I really like this one. I don't know. I, I guess you're right. They pulled some punches. There were some too many people exploded that didn't die. I still really liked it, though. I've, I'll give it a B plus. I wonder if it wasn't because they made it like sounded like it was a complete rewrite. And I'm wondering if it wasn't a complete rewrite it sounds like it was it was fairly different like it was going to focus more on matt reeves described it as a bond film the the and he's like i really like the script deathstroke focus on arkham a lot on arkham asylum um and he just wanted to go more like the mystery noir route yeah. and ended up changing it but he did like the original script yeah but it, i mean um, it's interesting too because he's matt reeves directed one of my least favorite movies of all time which is cloverfield but he also uh, directed a lot of the Planet of the Apes movies, which are all really solid. I don't like those. And they'll movies. feature Andy Serkis heavily, so I guess that makes sense. Yeah. I'm not a huge fan of the... You're really giving this movie a D plus? I mean... Why is it... Here's my question to you. Why is it deserve better than that? Cody, tell me. I love the mystery. love the vibe. Oh, there's some great performances. But I felt the like gadgets. the mystery was just I Batman following the wrong lead until somebody was like, what about Seven? And him be like, oh, Seven, I thought of it. That's me, my 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 detective brain. And then it's like, but it was... <laughs> I love the, the mystery of the Riddler and like, what's his deal? What's his end goal? I thought it was great. And like, I love the turn at the end where you see like what he's doing and he gives himself up and that's all part of his plan. It was great. I really liked it. Okay. Here, okay. I don't know, man. Here's a, no, okay. Catwoman, cat. You didn't enjoy Catwoman's. You know what? You say moments? that, but that's. I'm look. I was looking at a picture, and the cat and Catwoman and Batman came up, and out of respect for their dynamic on screen, I will up it to a C minus. Yeah, I'll get it out of nice. the D and go to a C minus. Like, I understand what you're saying, right? Like, it could have been a home run, and they did so many things right, but they didn't execute on enough things. Like, I hear what you're saying. It's like but all I the still DC think, movies. They're trying I to do still think much. it was better than a D. You know, I, I just think it's above that level. Like, yeah, there's too much they did right. I think you said you came in a little late. The beginning of this movie is it's the Riddler killing the guy. And so you, it's interesting because you see someone in black, like, looking through looking in the manner like when you, what i was thinking was like oh are those the waynes in there like what's happening or is that batman watching someone and it, it, it ends up being the riddler so just interesting to be like oh who is that ends up being the riddler like oh this must be a bad dude oh it's the mayor who got killed oh a kid got killed and so it's interesting to see like batman connect with that kid because he's he realizes like oh because when he's investigating the crime scene it's like oh this kid's an orphan now like you know so it's, i don't still know. i like mom. those themes what so he still has his mom so even there it's like Look, rich moms don't even count. Orphan. And it's like they but, drink, they do Pilates, and they play Pilates. tennis. Okay, that's all they do. Okay, yeah. Um, but you know, I just I liked all that. I'm just saying, I think they were intentional about what they did. Even if you didn't agree with all their choices, I think they made a lot of good intentional choices. They set a vibe. They made me unsettled. I liked the villain a lot. I don't know. I, I think the the production design was great. The costumes were great. So I think all of those things together, um, you know, at least give it that base of like, no, a decent movie. You know, I wouldn't put it below a decent movie at all in my book. I would say it was very good, but I understand if you didn't like it, but you got to say it was decent. Totes dees. Totes I mean, dees mins. I mean, like that's so really that's like, I think why I, I, I'll raise it up because I mean, as a movie with the costume and the choreography and the casting and all that, like, they did fine. I just think like the director and writer had all the ingredients to make like the best Batman movie. And he's like, what if I just didn't instead? What if I tried to be different and make an, it's an arrow movie with a Batman skin. Mm. That's kind of what it is. It's like the green arrow. Right. Where it's right. like, <laughs> I'm like, come on, man. 
All right, I got you. I look. I appreciate you. Also, why make Colin Farrell sit through so much? So much makeup, um, I, I'm sure. I heard be so an little. interview with him. He loved it. He loved being the penguin. He was like, it was the most freeing thing I've ever done. Like, I thought the prosthetics would be um, restricting. Exact. Like, as an actor, I felt completely free. Like, I felt like I could be a whole other person. Like, it was so awesome to perform as the penguin with the prosthetics they gave me. It's like, respect. Colin Farrell's a cool dude. Um, but yeah. Let's get Richard Kind in there. Come on. Yeah. Look, if uh, if Chris Nolan can recast Maggie Gyllenhaal to replace Katie, Kate Hudson, uh, we can definitely throw Richard Kind in, nix out uh, Colin Farrell, and not even address it. No one will even know. They'll have no clue. Here's what I want to do. Much like uh, when they recast... Uh, that you know and then have Joker uh-huh. come in and be like oh so beautiful <laughs> and it's like really yeah. <laughs> I want to cast the peng- recast the penguin as Shaq and then have everybody nope. still refer to him as <laughs> short and pale and fat alright that's what I want Yeah, because I feel like that would be the same energy yeah that's good for me it's good for you yeah Shaquille O'Neal as uh, the Penguin. I think you want to do something a little bit differently. That's how you do it, right there. Let's do a Batman. Let's do a Batman trilogy where all the villains are just NBA centers. You know, let's do that. That's what I want to see. We'll get Yao Ming in there. Who's that guy that got his jaw broken in John Wick with a book? Bo- Boban is that him? The- the giant, uh, he's like super Eastern crazy European tall, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah get him in there. You know. Yeah, I would love it. Sounds great. And like, you don't address it. No one ever meets their eye line. <laughs> you just like, look forward right at their belly button. You know, yeah. pretend like it's not a thing. <laughs> oh man! All right. Why? Look. Thank you for listening. You can rate, revenge, rate, ugh, review. And share us. Revenge us. Podcast. That's what she said. You can revenge us. I don't know what I said. I was just channeling my uh, shack. So we're on social media. You can talk to us about movies you want us to review at Opinion Havers, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Check out the memes. Thank you for listening. Until next time, watch movies. And have opinions. It is so great when he's like, he calls himself vengeance. Everyone calls him vengeance the whole movie. And at the end, Riddler's like, we're doing vengeance. And it's like, oh, no. <laughs> I loved it so. I like when someone else is like, that's a cool nickname. I'm going to use it, too. You're like, oh, no, it's stupid. The thing I've been saying is so dumb. It's a perfect yeah. moment. Couldn't have wrote it better. Yeah. It's like when that, it's as soon as the TikTok lingo makes it to the millennials, it's like, oh, no, we're in trouble. You know, then the Gen then the Gen X just gets it, and it's like, oh, this is dead. You know, and then like two years later, the baby boomers get it, and you're like, oh man, here we are, we're doing it. Ah, yeah. uh, what was the per- he cut the thing like it made it, music slow. He dropped slowly, engulfed by the water. He sacrificed himself. This is his <laughs> his is his Dark Knight Rises moment where the bat wing blows up. Oh, psych. Do you guys want a flare? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> flare. It's kind of dark in here. I think that's it. But it's more that he got up doing? and then he whips it out like it's a nightstick and then it's like, oh, it's a flare. And it's like, <laughs> why are you doing like 18 like gotchas in a row? What's the what? Point? Of all the gadgets to have, why does he have a flare too? Like that okay. is the weirdest thing to have in your utility belt. I mean, that makes more sense than some of the stuff. Like there was one thing he popped out that I'm like, is that just a gun? Like when he was about to <laughs> yeah. kill the penguin. He did basically. shoot. He did shoot people with his grappling gun. It's like I don't believe in guns, but you know what? I will mortally wound you. <laughs> like I will give you an infected leg. You'll have to cut this leg off. Like it's like I still think you could kill. Like he, I mean, he could have got a headshot with that grappling gun. I feel like he was a good shot with it. You know, he only ever shot ankles, Achilles tendons. You know, <laughs> so people could like. 
It's a great movie. Uh, A plus, ten out of ten.